Hey everyone, this is Sunny Justice, and don't forget to check out our merchandise for the It's a Criming Shame channel. Now let's get into this video. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the discrepancies, some of the discrepancies that Jordan Willis's lawyer has been saying. So I'll let you listen to those. It's interesting though that you would bring up um, that there was another person there other than the, the three who died, the owner of the home, and then this mystery man after the question I asked about drugs. Is there a reason for that? No, um, just in fact, I learned uh, a little bit more about this other individual today. There are uh, some things that I'm not gonna be allowed to comment on based on confidentiality uh, reasons. There were, uh, in addition to the three gentlemen that uh, are deceased, in addition to Jordan, there was one other individual that was present in the home. And um, I'm not gonna comment on anything about the activities that were going on there other than the fact that they were there and they were socializing after the Chiefs game. Um, uh, you know, the basic scenario is they had watched the Chiefs game in a couple of different places. They went back to his place, uh, his home afterwards uh, to play some video games and hang out. And at some point during that process, he got tired and he fell asleep. Um, Okay, I understand. Did your client ever leave the home from Sunday night and the football game until uh, Tuesday when they discovered the bodies in his backyard? Did he ever leave and go outside the home? Uh, no, I don't believe that he did. Paserno says Willis never left his home once he got back there on Sunday. Is that they were trying to contact him and he wouldn't respond and they were going to the house, etc. Sure. I don't know about whether or not they went to the house or tried to contact him, um, but he was home sporadically. When he would have people over his house, sometimes, um, as people do, they get tired. They're, they're people who are very close to you, um, and then you feel comfortable going going to bed and allowing them to leave whenever they want to leave. But to be clear, they left. those three men left the house. Jordan saw them leave the house. He said goodbye to them. He laid down and he crashed, and they let, went out the front door. Yes. They went out the front door. He, he witnessed them leaving the front door of his house. Sure, yeah. After he said goodbye to them, he was hanging out. He went back on the couch and he slept. You know, when they left his home after the game, um, he didn't even really know which door they went out. They were in the backyard. He doesn't use that particular door. He goes out in the front. Yeah, can I back up for a moment there? Are you saying that your client, Jordan Willis, escorted the three victims to the door? He showed them to the door. Did they? Uh, make I don't, out it, the it's door? not that formal, Ashley. He didn't escort them. They're his friends. Okay. They've been together all day. They're leaving the house. You know, they're guys. They shake hands. They hug. See you later, bro. Whatever they did. Um, b before he fell asleep, they were going to leave. Um, he actually escorted them to the door, said their goodbyes, opened the door. So, as you can see, those are just some of the discrepancies by John Perserno. Now, this is what's left a family just absolutely devastated is that they don't know yet what has happened to their loved ones, the three men that were found dead in the backyard. Again, that is Clayton McGinney, Ricky Johnson, and David Harrington. Now, I'm not sure if you caught this or not in the first part of this video where John Perserno says, that they were actually at different places before that they arrived back at Jordan Willis's home and were doing activities like playing video games, etc. And that they actually had already watched the Chiefs game. So I think a lot of people are under the impression that they were enjoying the Chiefs game at John Willis's home, that they were hanging out. So let's listen to that part again. Um, uh, you know, the basic scenario is they had watched the Chiefs game in a couple of different places. They went back to his place, uh, his home afterwards, uh, to play some video games and hang out. And at some point during that process, he got tired and he fell asleep. Um, so last night, News Nation puts out an interview that they did with Ashton, a neighbor that lives across the street, on January 9th of 2024, in some of the things that he said that he had witnessed. So let's listen to part of that and show that video. Ashton Brady, he was the neighbor who lives right across from Jordan Willis, who just by happenstance looked out at the exact moment that 911 was being called. Ashton, we know now that that was Clayton's fiance that actually discovered those bodies, called 911 and then alerted the authorities. Just walk me through what you saw in that moment. So basically I was just going, uh, turn off all my lights. I was getting ready for bed, locking the doors. I went to lock my front door and I saw a woman come out of the backyard on her phone and she looked, she looked distressed because she kept looking back towards the house and I thought it was weird. But I just moved in so I really didn't know much. And so I just went back to my room 
10 minutes later I saw an ambulance drive by and I said well that's just weird something's going on went to the front front room looked out and I saw that there was already three cop cars and there was a man detained and the woman was talking to the other police and basically I just I kind of watched that conspire for an hour or two the man eventually left uh, the police searched the house went through the backyards and everything and I, I had no idea what had happened and the next morning I saw the news that they had found three dead bodies and I just was kind of in disbelief I was like wow I watched that happen right and, and actually we're looking at that video that you shot right there on the top left corner of your screen so basically you're saying that's the video where you're actually looking out and you can see Jordan that's, Willis that's, being detained that's probably within the first five to ten minutes I like I was like oh my goodness something serious is going on at least so yeah so your red flags were going off in that moment but even before that right because you saw some of these victims cars that were right here parked in front of your house and that also kind of alerted you right because that was unusual yeah we we had just moved in but that week we had never seen those cars there and then all of a sudden that a whole weekend there was uh cars parked right in front of our drive and they never left not and they stayed there until the police came and even after that we found out they're deceased and but they, yes those cars never left and obviously that was something that raised your suspicions at all. Tell me, I know you, you hadn't lived here for very long, right? Uh, but tell me at all about Jordan Willis, what you know about him. I mean, did you ever see him out and about? Was he friendly? Did he come by and talk to you ever? Honestly, I, I have never seen him out. I never, I never saw him or talked to him, so I, I cannot speak for that, honestly. I do not know. How about the fact that just something that is so strange, this case in general is, is bizarre and we don't have many answers, but the fact of the matter is two, I'm sorry, three men were outside for two days on this backyard, one sitting up in a chair, two in laying down on their backs, frozen to death. I mean, how do you wrap your, your mind around all that information? I, it's a lot, honestly. There's, I imagine it has something to do with a, a bad drug or something, but I... It's, it's strange that how long it occurred for people for something to notice like that if it happened on a Sunday. That's a long time, and I feel like someone should I, something should have been said, I would imagine. Yeah, it's hard to say out loud because you don't have all the information, but the fact of the matter is three men are now dead. Does it feel like you're getting or your community is getting the answers it deserves right now? That seems to be the big issue that the families have is it just doesn't feel like they're getting closure because they're not getting answers. Yeah, I feel for the families and that, that they just want to know what really happened and I feel like we I mean if if we need to know we need to know I'm sure answers are going to come out but I know a lot of a lot of people are wondering what happened around here that's for sure what is the talk of the town how are people talking about it still because no doubt about it the whole world is looking at this case and talking about it so how do you and your friends talk about it process it work through this whole story uh, you know we just kind of sit down and talk about it sometimes we're just randomly we'll be talking about like like what could have really happened like how how do your three buddies, like, you know, just you not notice them for two days outside in the backyard? And that's just it. How do three able-bodied men, aged 36, 37, and 38, wind up dead in Jordan Willis's rental home? Now, his lawyer, John Perserno, has done Jordan Willis no favors. As you heard at the start of this video, there was at least four different versions of what John Perserno had said about how the men left. So Clayton, Ricky, David, and Alex are the men that were hanging out with Jordan Willis. Now, one of the victims did not have his jacket on. David H. was found dead in a chair on the porch, and Clayton and Ricky were found dead in the backyard area. Now, Jordan Willis's lawyer now claims that he went to bed and that the friend stayed. However, that would contradict Alex Lee's statement that he left about an hour or two before the other friends and that they were playing Jeopardy. So what actually happened? So hey guys, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Please hit that like and the share. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Now look out for part three that we'll be discussing the oddities. As well, check out our social media, our merchandise. And if you want to help support this channel, just scan the QR code for the PayPal or the coffee app that's on this video. And all links are in the description of this video as well.